And welcome to the women's semi-final of the 2022 Australian Ultimate Championships. Coming to you live and exclusive in Australia on KO Freebies and on ultivids.com for international viewers. Hopefully we've got some international viewers joining us from New Zealand to cheer on the Blueberries out of Auckland against Ellipsis Asterisk from Melbourne. Simon Talbot here with Sarah Perkins and we're pumped for a big one. Yeah, it should be a good game. Not surprising to see, see Ellipsis here. Bit of an unknown for us with New Zealand in the mix, but great to see them in the semi-final. And uh, I was going to say, the, the teams are out there and came ready to go. We thought, hang on, they're, they're going a couple of minutes early. So I think we've just heard Ellipsis Asterisk Captain Georgia Egan Griffiths just point out that uh, time cap isn't st starting straight yeah. away. So. I think you've still got about another minute. Good to see that they're raring and ready to go. Should be an exciting day full of high energy, hopefully. Wanting to get it underway. And, of course, their sister team, Olympsis Ampersand, in semi-final action against Old Foes Manly Ultimate Club. Happening quite nearby. We're fortunate enough that we can sort of just look over the shoulder and get a quick score. So we'll bring you updates to that score throughout the live coverage of this as well whenever we can. But the focus for this is this game. As we see, Lear and me in there from Asterisk. We're pretty relaxed. I mean... All the Ellipsis players have been in this you know, situation many times before now. Some of them are you know, five times. Yeah, not a surprise to see that they're pretty cool, calm and collected on the line there. Raring to go. I'm sure we'll see some uh, typically clinical offence uh, from them. They always come out um, right from the word go. Uh, the other Ellipsis team had a very tight quarter final. Uh, so good to see people uh, taking it to Ellipsis and hopefully we get a nice tight competitive uh, semi-final here. Hopefully New Zealand can do a surprise upset, I would say. Fingers crossed. Well, fingers crossed for a close game. Not yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to blatantly bear it for one team here. but Of course, both these clubs, while their eyes for the next 100 minutes are on this game, afterwards they'll be got their eyes on the World Ultimate Club Championships later on this year in Cincinnati, Ohio, happening in July. Ellipsis, the Australian representative team there. Blueberry is the New Zealand representative team. So, Yeah, a few uh, New Zealand imports as well in their Ellipsis mix, in their squad, uh, well, in their club actually, yeah. uh, more than anything, not on this team. Um, but yeah, both gearing up, ready for the World Ultimate Championships. So we're kind of hanging out, waiting for the uh, siren. <laughs> There's usually the siren going for all games. <coughs> but our two game advisors just going, you know go what? by the whistle, I guess. We're, we're taking charge. <laughs> we're going to start the clock and just get it underway ourselves. So me and with the first pull sends it up. And we are underway the second last game of this event for both these teams. Teo Lenartz, Uvalin, there's the siren. <laughs> Melody Young, only looking behind. Eunice Chung doing a good number defensively. Couple of stumbles there from Nikki Boats, who we saw on day four of the championships a couple of days ago. Helping Blueberries to an early win against Manly Hoovlin. Not much happening downfield, so hits laterally to reset the stall count. Simpson. A lot of cuts coming towards her in short range because the deep coverage from Ellipsis through some of their tall players is just looking a little bit too threatening at the moment. Simpson. Field opening up a bit now. Taylor Nuts. Yong. Having a good look to that high side. No one moving there. Island getting involved now. Yeah, 15 from goal, huge throw goes up, and one, two, goes at it, probably needed a third. Yeah, some really impressive uh, defence there from Ellipsis, uh, forcing their downfield players under and then being nice and tight uh, further down the field, really creating that pressure for that turn. Yeah, Griffith shoots straight away looking for Cat Phillips, who's got a step on her defender. Takes the disc, slows down, just over 25 from goal with plenty of players streaming past her. Picks out Zoe O'Connor as her target, who raised that one in. And Ellipsis Asterisk get the first goal. 
not surprising to see the names of Egan Griffiths and Cap Phillips being involved in that point whatsoever. They would definitely be key leaders of this offense for Ellipsis. Uh, but starting it off with a break. As you see that shot there from Boats, not looking to pick out Numi Hovland, but just put it too high, I think. Gave the defense too much time to rein in. Phillips, both sides of the field to shoot at, and just it was just a case of waiting for the her cutters to cover, you know, the 60, 70 meters from the previous throw to get ahead of her. Yeah, really good cut there from O'Connor as well. Faked it in and then cut deep. The defender totally uh, committing in the wrong direction there and giving her acres of space for Phillips to throw into. So Zoe O'Connor getting them on the scoreboard. So a defensive break to open the game, not the way you want to start. If you're the team that's can see it at We're landing around about the brick mark, so about 48 from goal. Again, just no one can really get free downfield, so Boats and Simpson are going to have to work it among themselves, trying to open up the field a bit. Taylor Nart's getting involved as well. See Melody Young just sort of drifting down this near sideline. Tax the middle now. Young points, looks at Hoovel, and Hoovel's got Ireland. Puts it out to her advantage, that's a great throw. And Zaria Island. She likes that one. Getting blueberries on the scoreboard. Much better offense that time from blueberries. There's a bit more action happening downfield that provided them with some opportunities. Yeah, blueberries have a really interesting offense here. Starting very deep, um, creating lots of fi uh, lots of space in the middle of the field, which Ellipsis have been doing a pretty good job of containing. But as you can see, as soon as they kind of break into it, it really opens up their entire space on the field for them to throw into. Yeah, especially when you've got, I guess, both sides of the end zone to shoot at. It's a lot yeah. of territory for a one-on-one -on -one yeah. defense to cover. It was good by Melody Young. Just gave the old point to Hoovlin and said, go that way. And then Hoovlin's given the nod to Ireland. Yeah, and those are the kind of connections that you want to be practicing, that you want to see in action, not just here, but obviously at Worlds as well. So one all the score. Kelly Carter sends Blueberries into play. Amanda Fung fields it. It's our first couple of yards to George E. Griffiths. Looks like a zone-ish kind of look, but they'll be locking onto a match defense soon. Fung finds space. Phillips. E. Griffiths just ki moves it in so quickly. McDonald to Della. Della having a nice long look upfield. Phillips. Got a wide shot out to Dorothy Lee. Good form on that forehand. Della pops the hammer up looking for Jess Parks who bodies it well and comes down with it on the second grab. Great read there from Jess Parks. Della always loves a good hammer out there. Be interesting to see uh, the 2-3-2 two, two zone from Blueberries there, holding it all the way to the end zone as well, not transitioning out of it. But as you can see, Ellipsis patient, maybe a little bit of a 50-50 option there for the last one, but hey, it came off this time. And great read by Parks, as you said there. So the, the hammer throw went up and straight away Parks realised it was about to drop two or three metres short, so she came in and held her position so Carter couldn't come any further backwards. Yeah, definitely gave her the absolute best chance possible of being able to catch that. Used her body to box out her defender. Yeah. She definitely did not have the advantage. Yeah. Had to create one for herself. Took a couple of bites at it, but secured it with the two hands and hit the deck. So she'll be happy with her effort. I only released from isolation yesterday after being a close contact for COVID. And this team got... Fortunately had a couple of outs due to COVID protocols and have been running with 14 players for the tournament, which uh, look, we, when there's seven on the field, it seems like 14's a good number, but when you're playing eight games for the weekend, it's it's really not much. Yes, yeah, she'll, she'll be a welcome addition with some fresh legs on the field. Young. 
Half on Taylor Nuts, back with some boats. Boats with a range in the back end. Finds McGuinness, back to Taylor Nuts. Really extending the field now with their cuts, the blueberries. Still a lot of space at the front of the stack there. McGuinness. Wide shot out to Taylor Nuts. It's um, the kind of throws they're going to have to do to try and find space around the defence. Yeah, it's going to be hard for them. But with no wind, I mean, the chances of them coming off are definitely much higher than if there was. Hollowbone. O'Connor. Pin on the sideline, just over 20 from goal. Meehan. Wants to get it to that high side, away from all the defenders where they've got numbers. Finds Hollowbone, but pick was called in the stack. Her defender following her had to avoid a collision. And Blueberry's playing, that's uh, Hoovelin playing well out into this open space, trying to overload this side of the field, Sarah. Yeah, just hanging out in that space there. They know that a lot of cuts will be coming into it. It's the easier of the options for Meehan to throw into. Looks to identify the loose player, Caitlin Grange. Hollowbone's still on that high side, but not looking at the thrower. Gonzalez now. And Chong came out again, just cutting through traffic there. We see this happen pretty frequently late in the tournament when there's probably not the... Uh, physical effort left to be able to go no, for extended tight. cutting. Yeah. yeah, tired legs making uh, tired cuts, trying to take a shortcut through the stack. And Gonzalez with a short range throw out to the advantage of Lira Meehan. Zari Island furious with herself for that one. Allowed Meehan to get away from her. Yeah, it was a bit of a desperate bit at the end. Knew she had their first couple of steps on there and needed to make up that ground. So Asterix are uh, making the Blueberries pay for that turn. So see, yeah, that turn, kind of unforced. I mean, we talked about earlier, they need to try and get a bit more lateral distance on those throws, so you need to get those floaty ones out, but yeah, Ellipsis has been holding a uh, straight up force until about half by the looks of it before transitioning into a, a one way force. So maybe just that transition just made it a bit more flustered for the Blueberries. We heard an explanation from uh, Wildcats coach Nick Parnu during the uh, men's, the open semi final about the air atmospheric conditions in Australia being different enough that the New Zealand players are going to find the disc floats a little bit differently. It's more warm and humid here compared to New Zealand. And so yep. we'll see throws sometimes go high out of reach. I mean, I don't know enough about <laughs> meteorology. No, no scientist. It, but, so I'm happy to trust him on that one. <laughs> no, I have heard that even over in, uh, I guess, when they're over in Ohio, I'm sure they'll get some different conditions again. So good experience, I guess, for them playing in different conditions that they're not used to. Yeah. As that pull lands out of bounds, Blueberry start 44 from goal, Young. Carter, pick called in the stack. Yeah, another pick called. Seems to be a bit of congestion from both teams in the middle of the field there. I'm sure the bit of wet and chopped up ground isn't helping that case either. Hard work on the cars running through surface like this. Pull a few hummies. Great leading pass to Carter. She's got to look at the end zone, but everything well covered by the green and white jerseys. Ruhlman. Island striking into that corner. Can't get open though. Ruhlman heads to Boats. He wants to get to that high side. Finds a player out there, Williams. Boats continues over. They want to attack back this way now where they've got numbers. Carter pointing, but switches back the other way and puts in their second goal. That's really great patience there from the Blueberries. Not too flustered, just swinging it from side to side on the field, waiting for the space. And as you can see, easy throw in in the end for a goal. Opportunistic throw and cut there. You see, we see, I think it goes back to Carter here after the post. She looks and points 
And then the ellipsis defenders position and react and go right. It's going that way. And I don't think that's a set player, so it's trying to fake him out or anything. No. <laughs> All the defenders shifted that way ever so slightly, and so Yong took advantage. Yeah. Back that high side. Yeah. And great vision by Carter to spot it up. Shift a marker out of the way with the fake and get that nice low backhand out to it. Yeah, absolutely. It's always those, uh, it's not a, uh, uh, a well-rewarded job, but being that cutter that takes two or three players with you to then open it up for the easy score. Yep. Good team play there. Yeah. A cannonball, they call it. Just get in and wreck stuff. Another pull drifting out of bounds. No wind to speak of. We've had all kinds of weather conditions today, but right now, mild and still. Yeah, the rain certainly picked up in the middle of today on multiple occasions, actually. Throughout each of the games, they've had wind, they've had rain, and then they've had sunshine back again. Another sort of loose zone look here from Blueberries. Back to, back to that 2-3-2 there. Yeah. Ian Griffiths, Phillips, Stella. Just doing what they like here, throwing everything. And through the gap there to Dorothy Lee. Just in their comfort zone in that kind of offense, aren't they? 100%. Ellipsis loves a fast, quick pace of ultimate. Lots of short throws, getting into power position to then throw the deep shot. But if you throw a zone on Ellipsis, you know what they want. They're going to be quick, so you've got to be ready to react, especially when you've got a line with Egan Griffiths, Fung and, and Phillips. They've been playing together for how many years? They know exactly what each other want to do. And especially when the brick gives them time to set up position how they want, really size up exactly how they're going to play it out. If you are going to throw that zone look, you need to have a high floaty pull that lands in bounds. Get down there before they can get moving and hold them up. Yeah, absolutely. It's giving them centre of the field. That's where they want to be. Most of the time in the zone, you're trying to push them to a sideline. So giving them that option already starting in the middle, middle puts you on the backbone of the right way. And Paul didn't go up, so that's not offside. But I'm not sure what the... I mean, just putting a hand up to apologise. Oh, off, offense didn't actually have their hand up. I think they just sort of went to pull and then he's gone, hold up a second, something's missing. A bit like the start of the game, everyone ready to go. Just eager to get out there and enjoy themselves. McGuinness. Tia Lenartz and Simpson. The three backfield players. Yong finds space in the middle. Sends the pull up. It's a two-on-one, bit of work to do. And Hoovelin, bit of a nudge there, nothing to speak of. She thinks she did prevent her having a fair play at it, so Phillips will get the disc. Yeah, Lips is throwing out their own uh, uh, zone. First time we've seen it from them today. Grange. Got Gonzalez going long. Chung in short. Chung finds Gonzalez going long. Gonzalez has a bit of work to do. Maybe uh, first day legs would have been able to get that. Yeah, not that, not that sure. Would have been her lap. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> Gonzalez has it. Has that kind of uh, run on day three legs by the looks of it. They saw that block. It was Phillips who went early, kind of forcing Hoovland to come in, and then Mian went over the top and knocked it away. So yeah, okay. Here we see the zone set up. They're really focusing on avoiding those easy lateral passes. You can see Gonzalez there. Preventing that, and a foul's been called. Uncontested by Chung, so a bit of a bump on the mark. And Simpson's happy to take the reset. Reset at stall count as a result. Carter uh, direct using the disc to direct traffic like she's on the runway at an airport. Fantastic shot through the middle. To Yong, who... I better hold it up, not going to try and rush it through when you've got Lyra Mean and Cat Phillips sitting at the back there waiting for you to take those uh, extra shot. It's danger signs as is trying to catch it that close to the sideline and keep your feet in as McGuinness has just found out. 
Yeah, Lips is doing a really good job of just trying to put pressure on those easy resets around the disc, what they Blueberries would be looking for to get through that zone. Eunice Chung up the line to O'Connor. Nice little set play that one. They spread themselves out across the field to basically create a little two on two rather than a you know five on five, six on six. Yep. Taking that poaching uh, defensive look out of the question there. Everyone else having to be accountable for their players still. And uh, O'Connor gets her second for the day. And it seemed like Grange was the intended target there, starting centre of screen, cutting back towards infield. Yeah. But just the nice little jab step cuts from O'Connor allowed her to attack that front corner. So a timeout's been called by the Blueberries. Just probably leaked one too many mistakes this early on. And playing catch-up ultimate against a five-time national champion. Not somewhere you want to be, Sarah. No, as, it, as we said at the start of the game, it's always, um, it's hard enough to get a block on ellipsis. So when you do, you want to make sure you take advantage of it. They've been able to get a few, but Blueberry is just making a few, a bit more unforced errors, especially with those lateral swings across the field. Uh, just pushing them a little bit too far on both occasions and causing an easy turnover in a, a spot on the field uh, where ellipsis don't really have to do too much work. So, the one advantage we know the Blue Berries can have is they can afford to outwork Ellipsis here. So, they really, I'd like to see them really extend the cuts of the field to try and work the legs over because they've, it's, they've got to fail at some point. They're only human. Dan Clinton, you were down there listening. Yeah, just listening in on the Blueberries huddle, Janelle Simpson leading the chat, talking about how they want to break down this zone, asking for pivoting through the cups and having the handlers setting up early behind the cup so that they can create some width. Yeah, definitely going to be key for them getting through that zone there. Seems to be being fairly effective for them. Ellipse is very comfortable in the Blueberry zone. See if they come up with another type of defense or they maybe just make a few tweaks to see if they can change the pressure. Man with the pull, this one will land inbounds. Giving them good field position. Blueberries about 45 to go to goal. Boats, Hoovlin, Yong. Owens charging deep. McGuinness has found space there, but here they are with the lateral movement, making it. Looks like they've really tidied this up in that, as Dan said, in that timeout. And here we go, more direct throwing is what they need, McGuinness. Taylor and Arts, Young. Island's going towards the end zone again, but probably another 10 metres upfield before I take that shot. But if they're going to fumble it like that, makes it even harder. Tracy Chong now. Della coming towards her, looks it off. Chooses Hollowbone instead. McDonald. Grange running it down comfortably. And Della, the jab step, she's gone once towards the disc, once away from it. And Blueberry is calling out of bounds. Della, happy to accept that call. I think, yeah, she had that back foot lifted. Yeah, yeah tried to work hard there. Just the disc just fading away at the last minute. Yeah. She's just able to drag that toe, might have been able to keep that in, but not quite. Yeah. That's good. She didn't worry too much about where her feet were. Thought, I'll stick it back, see what happens, but focus 100% on the catch, and yep. then see what happens. Boats. There's a couple of players heading away from her. Melly Young's having to slow down, look backwards, and Tracy Chong just waited for that to fade into her path. Yeah, really great read there from Chong. Yep. Saw that it was slowing down and put herself right in the line for that defense there. And with the break side out to an unguarded Grange. Has one look lateral, one look up. Pointing to where she wants the cutters to go. Has to send it on a high stall camp, but not a bad look to send it to. Lira Mian goes up. She's got an option left, got an option right. Takes the left to Eunice Chung. And <laughs> Nikki Boats. Again, you don't know what you can get unless you go for everything. And it would have been so easy for Boats to go, you know what, she's reeled that in. But the disc set up long enough for her to charge in. Yeah, maybe a little bit too casual there. 
from Chung. She didn't get... Like, the defence didn't get a hand on it, but sometimes no. just the presence... Feeling someone running you down yes. behind. You can like, feel oh them God. coming. There's the pressure's more, on. There's one more thing to think about. Yep. <laughs> 64 to go to goal for Blueberries. Both looking for Ireland, but can't work around that mark. And Yong happy to go for it. Would have been a high stall count, so the last option she had to throw it. Nina Strong telling her Carters to push further away from her, get a bit of room at the front, and a pick's been called before anyone's even moved, which is interesting. But it'll give the stoppage in play. Look for the forehand shot, sorry, the backhand shot to the high side, as I say it. Yep, there we go, Catlin okay. Range. <laughs> <laughs> Straight away with that breakthrough there. Lovely put out into space from Chung. Great cut from Grange. And... Like, the pick call is there as a rule for safety, so there's no collisions in the stack, but it allows offense to pause and size up everything and maybe even make a bit of eye contact and a nod, so... Yep. It's, uh... One of the best moves in the books, making the eyes from the stack... Yep. ...to the thrower, especially when it's in that red zone in the end zone. Especially when you you know what the favourite throw is of the thrower. Like, we oh, know absolutely. Eunice Chung's that around break backhand is the one. Yep. It's either going to be the around backhand or the inside flick from yep. Chung. So you know it's heading to that break side either way. So giving her a nod, just going, you want to try your favourite throw? Because I'm going to set it up for you. Have at it. So 6-2 the score now. The defensive pressure from Ellipsis here on the Danfield card. I know it's, all, it's very easy to concentrate on what's happening around the disc, but I want you to have a look at just how well covered all the cutters are downfield. Oh, zone now. Okay. <laughs> okay the transition. They've stopped that initial pull play. Carter. Lynch. And she usually plays in the D-line, coming across for an O-point to help them get some movement. In fact, quite a number of D players are on out at this point. Williams. Lynch. Commander Fung right on the hip. Carter. She's got to look long. Put the floaty throw out. It gave O'Connor time to catch up. But Emma Menzies, as calm as you like, not too worried about what's happening behind her, only what's in front. The 175 gram ultra star in her hands. No, that was a really great throw, great shape. Uh, just floating it just out in front. Easy catch, straight to the chest. And Emma Menzies really put in a lot of work, so rather than trying to beat her player in a narrow sort of five to 10 minute space, she really extended out to sort of 15, 20 meters instead yep. to get the step on her marker. So it's the first offensive goal they've put in for a while. And so some of the players who are just on that point will be returning out there for defense, so. Yeah, the offense players had a few points in a row, so maybe a bit of time for the D to pick up the pace here. Here, the first whistle go from the game advisors, signaling that's 45 seconds, which 60 seconds is when offense need to be ready from when the last goal is scored. Of course, two whistles being the put your hand up now, please. And if we ever get to it, three whistles for the defense to send the pull out. Egan Griffiths, loopy backhand throw out to Della. So now they've got their defense locked in early, it's not allowing. Ellipsis to charge through straight away. It held him up a little bit. Fung. Egan Griffiths. Chung. Della continuing across. Got Cat Phillips at that very top corner there. Don't be surprised to see a shot within the next cycle or two. There we go. There it is now. McDonald up the line. There we go. George Egan Griffiths for mine is the best decision maker with the disc in her hands of either gender in this country. Yeah, she's um, 
She's a very intelligent player. She sees what's happening down the field. And she's able to manipulate the disc for exactly how she wants it and where she wants it to go, which is not something that you see from a lot of handlers and particularly in the women's game. Uh, so it was really impressive watching her. I love watching her play, especially when she's teamed up with people like Phillips. Yeah. And it's like, and go to work. She's got the ability. She... If you ever asked her at any point to pause the game and close her eyes, she'd be able to point out the other 13 players on the field. Oh, easily, yeah. yep. Just the awareness of tracking everyone at once. Just so as soon as the disc is in her hands, she already knows where she's throwing, where the defensive threats are. Yep. And you can't get a mark on her because the disc is out of her hands just after she's caught it. Yeah. And uh, being taller, having a larger wingspan as well if you're going up against her yeah. she's able to pivot quickly around you so you have to go even further to try and get a block on her or try and put any kind of pressure on that throw Yeah, yeah. I mean the best decision maker of the day is backed up with one of the best <laughs> yeah. throwing actions yeah. I mean it's yeah. tricky there so let's just call that time out, uh, we've seen this from their men's team as well it's a strategic thing is you've got three timeouts for the game but you can't use more than two and a half so typically when they get to seven they'll call one just to get the rest and use it yep. while they've got it daniel clinton was over there listening to the huddle any insights yeah just listening to steve wright talk to his ellipsis team very confident they're going to get an opportunity on offense here so he called the timeout to emphasize what they're going to do on offense talking about attacking the field Yes. On offense, attacking the space, getting your legs under you, running hard and taking half. Yeah, so working to create options with your running, not just with your throwing. Ambitious effort for a team with 14 players. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and, and that's what their opponents would have been looking at all weekend, going, they've only got 14, they can't just keep doing this all game. But they Seems like they can at this demonstrate point. Demonstrate they can, yeah. Boats. Winds up looking for Ireland. And there we go. She jumps it in, lands it in, and lets everyone know about it. Ireland enjoying those goals there. That was clinical offense there from Blueberry. Is exactly what I think they want to be getting more of. So second goal now. They should be looking to do that more often, I think, just yeah. for rather than letting the defense get too comfortable. Get down quickly. Don't just jog to your position. Sprint to your position after the pull. So yeah. you're ready to make those attacking moves immediately. Yeah, you see on the replay there, straight away, movement's going before ellipses even get close to them. They're already making moves, cutting down field. And, and that's what you need to do, is to get the disc moving, especially against a good defensive team like ellipses. I'm just poking my head out the booth, Sarah, to look at the field behind us for the other women's semi-final. I can see the scoreboard saying 8-2. I don't know whose advantage that is, though. Do you, do you want to make the guess or not? Look, I'm going to say probably ellipsis, but I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy to be wrong. Just the body language of both teams out there, pretty calm, so it's yeah. hard to know who's actually uh, <laughs> no got the advantage here. Back to this game. Phillips picks it up. Got Eden Griss actually Della heading towards her. Dorothy Lee takes off. She's got a couple of long options. Della really wants to get that out, but good marking by Lynch. Finds Tracy Chong underneath. Phillips catches it in a sea of blue jerseys. Della. Plenty of options in this front corner. Goes wide to Phillips. Numbers on that high side for Ellipsis. Good marking there, but I think Ruhlman to cut that one off. Force him to come back towards the low side. And Eden Griffiths just hadn't even hit the ground before she got that one out. Back to Phillips into Fung. And there's half. Eight goals for Ellipsis in probably as many possessions maybe yeah. maybe fewer i don't know if that's possible but it feels like it and so it's been a very quick 31 minute half but fantastic play from both teams we've seen blueberry sort of take try and haven't quite matched the speed of the game of yeah. offering yet but i think they are capable they just need to find that next gear find it soon yeah. and start to challenge the defending champions we're going to throw it down to Daniel Clinton. Yeah, I've managed to pull aside Eunice Chung here. Uh, Uni, a lot of players, they have different ways of preparing for nationals. Some love to get in the gym. Some love the distance running. What do you do to prepare? 
Uh, this year I've been hitting a reformer Pilates studio as kind of a substitute for hitting the gym. Um, it's 50 minutes, it's an intense like cardio hit kind of workout on like the Pilates bed machine um, and it's great. I really advocate for it. And you're feeling good physically? You feel like that's really giving you an edge here this weekend? Uh, I mean, I definitely feel stronger in my core. I think, you know, I normally have some knee problems throughout the season, but this year I've, you know, really felt really good about it. Brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. Good luck for the second half. We'll go back to you, Simon Talbot. Thanks, Daniel. It's interesting hearing all the different kinds of preparation that um, players go through. I know some swear by yoga. Um, a lot go by the gym, a lot go by distance running, but whatever keeps the body in tip-top condition for four days of ultimate... I can confirm she does like her reform and Pilates. I see the Instagram story most mornings. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, just talking about the about the blueberries there, I guess we we're talking about setting the pace of the game. And that's something that ellipses do so well is they bring other people into their style of play. So I think blueberries coming out of this half, hopefully we can see a bit more of their, um, their strengths with their long movement and their, because they've got the throws. They just haven't been able to get into a position to be able to use them. All right, we're going to take a chance to take a break for a couple of minutes. We'll be back with the second half shortly. And we're back with second half action, the Australian Ultimate Championships, day six of the seven day long festival. 
first three days with the Division 2. Happened a couple of weeks ago here in Nelson Bay, of which you were a part of, Sarah. Sure was. And then days four to seven, the Division 1 titles. And we're in the semi-final stage. The winner of this game in front of us going on to tomorrow's women's final. Which we'll bring to you on KO Freebies. Lucy Della for ellipsis now. Has a good look upfield. Back to Egan Griffiths. First time we've seen a stall camp put on her. Heads up the line. But good defence, good communication there. McDonald gets it out to Phillips. Phillips sends it long. Egan Griffiths who's charged at the end zone. <laughs> usually it's usually it's Egan Griffiths to Phillips, but they decided to switch it up. Yeah, that was a great cut from Egan Griffiths. Uh, only just before she was here with us on the sideline and then she's in the end zone scoring. She took off that upper line and then you see her, she disappears off screen. She just puts the skates on and hits that top corner of the end zone. For Phillips to just look up, pick her out, ahead of two defenders there. Interesting seeing Phillips, like, historically she tends to be very controlling of the offense behind every second pass, but now she's playing just on, I guess, the wider side, really just patrolling almost as a hybrid sort of wing and handler. She's got the capacity to basically govern a whole side of the field herself on offense. Yeah, yeah it's good to see that there's uh, so much depth in this team as well that they can. Um, they've got the confidence moving the disc through the field without her and she can kind of just patrol around the edges almost and jump in as needed. Yeah. Mian to pull nine for the score, first to 15. 100 metre cap for this game. Don't, we're not going to get to the cap at the rate we've been scoring. It's still under three minutes per goal. Young. Boats. Here we go. More aggressive throwing, but Ireland has to double back and go full stretch. Egan Griffiths does not mess around, gets it moving. 1 2 with Chilk. She's got hollow bone deep, but calls her back under. Having a good long look at what's happening. Puts it over the top to Meehan. Meehan with the backhand out to O'Connor. It's going to be a foot race to this front corner. Who wants it first? Claire Hollowbone. Decides that she'll take that space and uh, get her name on the score sheet. Yeah, I think Blueberries will be a little bit disappointed with that. They had some good movement through that uh, ellipsis zone. It was just as they were starting to make some ground, so it was a bit of a an unforced error there, just pushing that pass a little bit too far um, than what was needed. We were uh, there was about... plenty of space there as well. Yeah, we were talking before they need to... Be a bit more just quicker with that this move if they're going to yeah. get this around if they're going to get it around the ellipsis defense. But there is yeah. such a thing as too quick. <laughs> it's about finding that balance, yeah. especially if you're not used to playing that style of offense as well. Yeah. Um, if the team kind of forces you into that, um, but I definitely think they're capable. They're only one or two passes away from really cracking it open. So hopefully we'll get to see um, yeah. them put away this point. Good attacking throw bit by Connor. Typically, you'd wait for the cutter to come further around so you could have the backhand shot. Yeah, the round but option. But she just fired it directly at her, which yeah. you know can can work to the defense's favour. But spoke to what they talked about their timeout before half. They're just going to attack this game. They're not just going to wait for things to happen for them. Nicky both having to get long to salvage that one. Taylor Nuts. Back to Nikki Boats. Hoovelin. Takes a shot looking for Ireland and Phillips just takes it ahead of her. Wide to McDonald. Having to put some work in to get it down and probably the first skerrick of fatigue we've seen in this team for the last three days. Yong on her own. Hoovelin putting the work in this point. Back was to Yong because she didn't see a lot of work happening downfield. Tara Lenartz got McGuinness coming towards her. Puts it out to Ireland and Phillips with their second block of the game. 
just telling Dorothy Lee, just head to the end zone, I'll take care of the rest. Close the forehand out to her. Makes it look effortless, doesn't she? Yeah, it sure does, and I'm very disappointed there. Yeah. Uh, with the outcome of that play, she's been everywhere today. She's been definitely one of the standout for the Blueberries, working hard in there. Bit hard done by, I think, in the last couple of points. The yeah. throw is just leaving her with a little bit too much work to do. Yeah. And uh, Ellipse is taking advantage of it, getting it back. And Ellipse has identified her as, like, I guess, one of the hardest working downfield to have to put the number one defender out there on her, realising that yep. she's likely to be that target in the end zone, as we've seen twice before. Yep. So... Almost like a badge of honour that you, you get yeah. multiple time Australian yeah. representative putting you, you're that much of a threat. But Yeah, it might get taken out of the game a little bit. But hey, you're freeing up that space then for the rest of your teammates. Yeah. So see if the Blueberries can maybe find someone else on the field. But yeah, Ireland backing it up again, back on the line this time for Blueberries. We've seen a bit of a change up in personnel for offence for Blueberries, as this all happened the first half so try and be probably won't see much of a different style but just having different players with different looks and different cuts might be enough to sort of find some gaps Carter got a zone look again sort of just players sort of seem deceptively open in this zone but trying to find the gaps when you're actually out there it's a hard task Roman to Lynch no, sorry that was Puts a little long throw out. It's an excellent throw there. Out into space. Perfectly weighted. Really good offense there from the Blueberries. And that's how you beat the zone. We talked about it last time they were on offense. You've got to take those aggressive shots through. Yeah. This time they paid off. So Yeah, made it stick this time. Last time it was just on that throw through the middle that they had an unforced error. But this time hmm. off that and we see that. Straight away. And the gaps come while the defense is on the move. So if you're a yep. young player watching at home thinking, how can I play against zone better? Keep the disc moving because the defense is stationary. Yep. There's no gaps. You can't find them. So Exactly. And this ellipsis zone there, you saw Della being quite shallow actually compared to where the offensive player was. So if the Blueberries can get into that power position, that deep shot is going to be open 90% of the time until Della or ellipsis, then maybe make an adjustment if that comes off a few too many times. Egan Griffiths, they've got a flatter mark on now, preventing those longer throws, but Della says, don't worry about that. Gets the attacking to Lee. Phillips sends it long. Egan Griffiths. <laughs> and there's another one, another one for that pairing, knowing exactly what's going to happen. Egan Griffiths. This time hitting the opposite side of the field from the starting air cut. But just so much, just looks like there's so much space on the field there yeah. for them to throw into. We're almost entering preview mode for tomorrow now, I think. Yeah. But uh, we have seen ellipsis like they're an outstanding team. Like the work that they've put in over the last couple of years to develop and enhance the level of women's ultimate in this country by you know basically being the bar that everyone now has to meet yep. it's just absolutely phenomenal something rarely seen in amateur sport for players to dedicate this much time and energy and effort to being everything and Jess Parks there happy with George Egan Griffiths getting her second goal and yeah I think we're in preview mode I think that the team's trained to peak at the final of nationals yeah trying to sort of hit their peak on day one so they're planned to sort of work their way through the tournament with certain players certain structures and i think tomorrow we'll see that yeah definitely flex their muscle a bit yeah. more in this game today carter looking for hoovelin through the cup with chung on her tail Range just taken off to the end zone just to get that offense moving. Drag some defense with her. Chong. Run heading away from her, not much heading towards. McDonald was their footing. Looks Four. like we've got a stall call further down the field. That yeah. was really great defense there from 
the Blueberries cutting off lots of options. Looks like it might be contested. We're going to have a chat. Our game advisor, Aiden Turnover, that is over there. He'll just listen in. We'll see if we can listen in too. Looks like we've got a contested stall out there. So, of course, the stall count. You've got 10 seconds to throw the disc. Closest defender counts it. As soon as you utter the first part of 10, you get t that's it. Stall out happens. <laughs> so I think she's got the app, but she's going to have... This will be coming back in on nine. Yep, a two count to get rid of this. Yep. Watch this disc get sent to the pack of players in the stack. Yeah, that's 100% stall out that time. Intercept anyway. Looks like a retracted call there, so got the turn. Really good opportunity here for the Blueberries if they can put this one away. Boats. And a couple of fumbles still in the air. <laughs> Maintains possession. Here we go, Taylor Knights. Let's get a bit of energy going. Ireland charging hard. Lynch. A couple of options. Decides to settle it down. Boats winds the back hands up. She's got two out there, two targets to meet. But Collarbone goes over the top. It was Naomi Hoovelin was the primary target. McGuinness the other one. And injury's been called. Amanda Fulham's trotting to the sideline. Again, seems okay, but she is sort of... She's going to sit down. I think it's an ankle problem, yeah. but it feels more precautionary at this stage that she doesn't want to damage herself for tomorrow, so any kind of twinge felt, she's just going to rest up now. Yeah, hold on there. Might not have had the uh, numbers advantage, but certainly had the height advantage and made use of it. So Eunice Chung to start play for Ellipsis 64 from goal. You can see Tracy Chong second from the top of the screen in the long shot there. Overthrow. And there we go, a second opportunity for Blueberries. Not often you see teams have this happen. Yong heads up to Carter. 15 from goal. Tio Lenartz. Wide shot to Ireland. Ireland heads in board. There we go. Great patience there from the Blueberries. Not surprised to see Ireland involved in that play either. They look like they really wanted to try and jam it in that corner there, but smart decision to swing it back across the field, spread that defence, and then just poke it through there from Ireland. Captain Kelly Carter there, providing a bit of a spark for the Blueberries. Leading from the front. And getting another goal on the scoreboard for them. In the other semi-final, we have Ellipsis Ampersand up 11-5 over Manly. So similar kind of scoreline, similar kind of margin. So it gives you an idea of the standard we'll be seeing tomorrow. Yeah. So we took over 50 minutes deep into this game. And Ellipsis will be on offense for this point for the first time in a while. But as we've seen, whenever they have been on offense, they've just been able to slip it through very quickly. Yeah, we can see if the Blueberries maybe will put on a different look for defence, try something new, see if they can generate a block. If they can get a break here, yeah. might just be enough to maybe gain a little bit of momentum in this game. Unconventional. I'd deliberately put the pull out of bounds to allow you to get a static point, get a static offence, a defence on before they can do this. It's a high shot there. Phillips underneath it. Checks her feet, not in bounds. Looking for Jess Parks one on one, but she's got a spare defender there, clogging up that space. Stella gets the return, pings the hammer up, looking for Amanda Fung, who's got back on the field. Turns out her ankle's okay, but yeah, it's they get their offense started just way too quickly for defense to react, and yeah, it's, yeah. it seems unconventional, but the team we saw factory in the pool play in the quarterfinal, they wouldn't put the pool out of bounds, but try and land it close to the sideline and roll it out of bounds. Yeah, I was going to say, try the roller. And if yeah. you can roll it out of bounds, you're then causing 
a delay in the start of Ellipsis' offense, and then they're also having to pick it up from the sideline as yep. well. So not a bad option there, I think, uh, to try and stop that quick movement. But um, Yeah, give your defense time to get down there, get set, get steady. Yeah. Yep. Without just letting the offense do what they want. I'm sure Della wouldn't have been too happy with that first throw that came off. But, um, I mean, when you've got Cap Phillips coming uh, under it, yeah, she'll your, make you look good. <laughs> your margin of error becomes a lot greater, doesn't yeah. it? So, um, so the timeout called there by, I think Blueberry's called that one. And we can see there, we saw this on day one. They do a lot of guided meditation to keep themselves present in the moment. So it looks like they're doing a bit of that now, a bit of deep breathing. Meanwhile, Dan Clinton was over listening to Ellipsis. Yeah, it was actually Steve Wright, coach of Ellipsis, who called the oh. timeout. He was preparing on the sideline uh, for as soon as that point was scored to call the timeout, get out there. He feels this is a key moment in this match, an opportunity to get a block here, take it to 14, and then win this nice and early 15-6. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like they've definitely got a strategy there with their timeouts taking them at key points we were talking before about taking it at seven yeah resetting and being able to put away and take half yeah. and then once again yeah if you can put away this one get to 14 um yeah it certainly takes the pressure off they're key moments in the game that we can reset and have a set play especially for what you want to achieve and again very much a rehearsal for tomorrow that yep. they're probably expecting to be at this point tomorrow where it's 13 and Probably sort of a 12, 13, 13 all. Which sides are you going to go to, though? Steve Wright. <laughs> He's going to be watching his children <laughs> fight. <laughs> Maybe he might just sit down with us in the commentary booth yeah. and make neutral. Give us some inside uh, information. Good pull by Lira Me and Blueberry starting. Playing with four back, and they've got their zone again. and. Yeah, Carter just got a clip on the arm. Chung happily acknowledging or accepting that call. So we'll be back with Carter with a fresh count. So Ireland picked out space. Fantastic throw to hit her. Yong. She's got Williams upfield. There we go. This is what happens when they take the game on. They look great. Yeah, when they really look to extend down the field, be really attacking, that's when they're absolutely at their best. And yeah. they've been able to actually score quite easily when they're actually yeah. doing that. It'll be great to see how they do with this this kind of offense at the World Club Championships later this year. Yeah. This will wreck a lot of teams. Like, it, We look at the margin now. This is the first game you've watched this event. You... The Blueberries are a very, very good team. They've made the top four. They've been made to look at probably not that standard, but they do deserve to be in the semi-final. Yeah, absolutely. They were certainly um, in that top bracket there. Uh, Well-deserved. Played really consistently across the whole tournament and really improved as it's gone on. Um, four wins in pool play. Yep. Got them here, plus a quarter-final win, so... We'll certainly be adding to the, the list of teams that we follow at the World Ultimate Club Championships later this year, Sarah. Yeah. 11-7 to Ellipsis Ampersand over Manly in the other semi-final. So Manly trying to generate a comeback there. Manly rallying a little bit. Eden Griffiths to Fung. And here we go. They've got their defense locked on now. And there we go. We've held them up. Eden Griffiths. Having to hold on for a bit. Had a good long look upfield before... Just dishing back to Lucy Della, who she knew was standing by. McDonald. Fung. This is up to Della. He can grip this. She's got Dot Lee heading long. And puts it to the advantage. We saw Kelly Carter peeling off the back there, but the throw was just held out long enough that it wasn't going to matter. Yeah. I don't think the Blueberries should be too disappointed with that point. They were able to really slow up the first. Yeah probably about 10 passes of their ellipsis offense and force them to do their plan B or C, I would say, um, compared to what they normally do. And if you can start generating that point after point, yep. um, you'll start gaining some rewards from that. But yeah, great pass there from um, Egan Griffiths, just perfectly weighted. Mm. Straight into the advantage of her player there. Of course, Egan Griffiths, one of the Australian representative players for the, the Crocs, the Australian national mixed team that will be competing at the World Games. 
yep. in Birmingham in Alabama later this year. I think that's around not long after before World Clubs. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely right. around the same time. I'm sure uh, playing just before team plays here is good preparation because yeah. the World Games team only has uh, seven men and seven uh, females. So smaller lineup. So really impressive for her to have made that team. So extended season for well most players on the field here with most other teams here at this tournament finishing up as of tomorrow embracing themselves for 2023 Carter puts a long shot out to Williams who's been on the end of a couple now Ruhlman lots of crowds around her but picks out of Someone to help her. Melody Young had a terrific game. Williams sends a throw up looking for Rawman who's head towards the back. And again, this take the game on offense from Blueberries. I mean, it it's works. it's so easy to look back and say, hey, hey, maybe they should have been doing this earlier. Yep. But they just weren't able to against the defense. But Yeah, I think they've made some adjustments. They were very deep. Um, yeah earlier in the game with their offense, trying to create a lot of space under, but I think they've realized that that's not necessarily where the space is. For them, the space has been uh, deeper their players. So once they're getting it around um, and over the top of the Asterix players, that's when they've really been able to look dangerous and score some goals. So 14-8 to score now. They keep the game alive for another goal. That menaces back Sarah, that Kookaburra. Keeping our field free of any pests. I think there's just lots of dirt out there at the moment. Carter has played just about all the last, I think, almost six or seven points in a row now. Just putting in the work. Sends the pull up. Fong to field it straight to Egan Griffiths. Again, they've got down there. They've locked it on early. That opening cut, that opening diagonal cut from Della. And the pick's been called as things get tidied up in the middle. <laughs> just, <laughs> just clarifying what's happening downfield. <laughs> Jess Parks there. Seems like there might have been a bit of contact with that pick as well. <laughs> Good there by Beth Williams just to hang out in the lane to put an extra bit of pressure on that throw. Parks, good attack. Ian Griffiths, what's the shot go? Oh, good, good by Carter to discourage that at least. Phillips this time puts the hammer out, looking for Lucy Della, and the lips are uh, through. And that'll be it. To tomorrow's final, and almost perfect timing as the semi final behind us is not wrapped up. I've made a mess of that. <laughs> <laughs> but fantastic play by Ellipsis Asterisk to earn their way to, for some of them, a sixth consecutive final. And Blueberries have done exceptionally well. Like, it's always going to be a hard ask going up against a team like this, but they've earned their way into the top four of the Australian Ultimate Championships after a finish, second-place finish at the recent New Zealand Championships. And we're going to be wishing them all the best and following their progress at the World Ultimate Club Championships this later. We're going to throw down to Daniel Clinton. Yeah, I've managed to grab Jess Parks. Jess, another national finals. It's got to be a great feeling, but I'm told that it's outweighed by another feeling after three years of trying. You won the talent show last oh my night. God. We actually did. We weren't expecting it. Um, we've lost to Caro two years in a row. And I think that was probably one of the biggest things Ruby Alex and I have ever done. So it's very exciting. Outweighing even the five in the row that uh, <laughs> Alyssa's won? Quite possibly, one. quite possibly. It right. was uh, very exciting. Tell me about these accessories in the hair. You've got... Uh, <laughs> A lot of things going on up there. Yeah, I love to just decorate. So I figured I'd do it for nationals too. I've got a little bag as well. So it's uh, very fun. I love doing it. Yeah, you look like a 70s lampshade. We'll go back to Simon Talbot in the commentary booth. What I love to see from Ellipsis, Sarah, is they take all their training and preparation very, very seriously, but not too seriously that they can't enjoy themselves while they're here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, I mean... It's always fun when you're winning. Yep. And so it obviously <laughs> makes it that little bit nicer and easier to have a bit of fun when you are winning. Yep. Um, 
But yeah, as you said, they, they put their head down when it's needed and when those tight games happen, I'm sure we'll see it tomorrow in the final, see a bit of that fire. But yeah, absolutely, off the field they seem to enjoy a good time like all the teams here. And yeah, I think Blueberry should be really impressed uh, with how they've performed today. Really impressive second half of the game as well and I think they can take a lot of, um, out of that half in particular. Of course, a dominant display to win a semi-final in pretty much bang on one hour. <laughs> <laughs> early home time, early dinner. Early home time. So tomorrow we'll be bringing you day seven of the championships, the final day. We'll have a bronze medal match in the morning, which division we cover yet is to be determined. And then at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time will be the open final between Ellipsis Men's and Sunder Slice with the women's final between Ellipsis Asterisk and Ellipsis Likely, Ellipsis Ampersand, as we see that semi-final still going. 12-8 to ellipsis at the moment. And yeah, not locked in yet. You never know. Yeah. Well, for now, that'll come to you at 1 p.m. tomorrow. So three games of high-quality ultimate as your weekend KO freebie and on altivids.com for international views. We hope you can tune in and enjoy us then. But for now, from Sarah Perkins and myself, Simon Talbot, enjoy your evening.
gradually, I realized it's about love. It's about you. It's about your passion to do what you want to do in the moment, in the now. This is not time. This is eternal. I, I want to see the world where the oh, where the global heart is awakened. That is what team I'm on. It's not too late because it's all about how you think. Wouldn't you want people to encourage each other instead of judge each other? Stop! You're all looking at me! Important.